meeting of the Sherman Zoning Board of Appeals is called to order. For the record, the date is Monday, September 9th, 2019. Time is 6 p.m. This is a public meeting for the Village of Sherman Zoning Board of Appeals. The agenda was posted online and at the Village Hall at least 48 hours in advance of this meeting and has been published in the local paper of general, general circulation on August 22nd, 2019. Mr. Clerk, will you please roll, uh, call the roll. Yeah, <laughs> please roll. <laughs> Birch? Here. Bybee? Here. Bradley? Rush? Chirac? Bull? Present. There's a quorum present to conduct business of the Zoning Board of Appeals. <clears throat> Will everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and Abby, will you lead us in that pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Mr. Clerk, will you call the roll, please? Van Aye. Burge? Aye. Bybee? Aye. Bull? Yes. There being a quorum present, uh, we are now in public hearing. As a matter of record, the purpose of this public hearing is to consider the petition submitted by Mr. Joseph Holler of 425 Woods Up Court in Sherman, Illinois, for a variance for the property located at 425 Woods Up Court. Petitioner requests a variance to Village Code 10-5-7 side yard setbacks to allow for an additional two foot into the side yard setback for a total of approximately 28 feet. Our village engineer could not be present tonight, but has reviewed the petition and has prepared a written recommendation. Mr. Clerk, will you please read the letter into the record? This is our engineer, Kevin Kuhn, uh, Kuhn Control Consulting Engineers, uh, September 9, 2019. To the Zoning Board of Appeals regarding zoning variance 425 and 425 Wood Duck Court. Uh, zoning Board could and Charles reviewed the submitted request for variances under parcel 0636204118 submitted by Joseph Holler. We find no issues under general engineering practices or public safety concerns that would prohibit the request from being granted. As such, we have no objection to the variance of 1072 yards of the Village of Sherman Ordinance to allow a reduction in the R1 minimum width of side yard from 10 feet to 8 feet. Respectfully, you can't do it. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Clerk. <coughs> uh, well, Mr. Holler, uh, or one of his representatives, uh, please come forward, state your name, relationship, and uh, to this meeting this evening, uh, and uh, present your petition for variance before the board, please. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Joe Hallward. Um, we've been in, uh, my wife and I, Robin, and our two girls, have been uh, since after 
Shonis, uh, 1999, we built our house on the back court. Uh, at the time we built it, uh, the contractor that we had, we told him that we had intentions later on to maybe expand the house a little bit and uh, be sure we have plenty of space, not a problem. Uh, we got ready to do the addition that we are preparing here to add a garage to the uh, north side of the house and expand our family room in the back. Um, part of that expansion is the result of we had some uh, weather damage a couple of years ago that tore up some purple and decking back then we decided to just tear it all down and expand. Uh, we come to find out as we were drawing everything out for us to maintain the roof line to keep the aesthetics from the, you know, the road uh, with the garage that we want to do. Uh, the lining doesn't set up the setback. So we measured everything out, and lo and behold, we're at about the eight foot mark to the property line to what would be, I guess, the door. Uh, my neighbor Ryan Lewis's house. Uh, I had a conversation with Mr. Lewis, and he has no issues with that. I believe he actually was contacted, so that's an affirmative. So we reached out to Mike and, and asked him what we did and what we needed to do. We filed for variance. I think it comes down to about eight feet instead of 10. Uh, we hope that uh, that's acceptable to the board and we'll move forward. Our intentions are that we get this and then I guess subsequently next week approved by the village board and get our building permit. We'll start construction that same week, carrying things down, uh, hauling the lumber, et cetera, like that, and getting the foundations to put that garage in. Happy to answer any questions. Board members, do you have any questions that you would like to ask? Well, I was out and looked at it, mm -hmm. and um, I just didn't like it at all. But um, I just want to say, are you going to clean it up, really clean it up this time afterwards, like get everything all the way? And yes, ma'am. In, in fact, uh, my contractor is here. Part of our contract is for him to haul away the bridge. There are bridges that there's Breathe there right now in the back. Uh, in an effort to try to save myself some money on the contract, I did the demo of the deck. Uh, but the hallway will happen when they continue to demo the pergola that's there. But how, I, you know, I thought, how could you live there and, not, and you didn't haul that stuff away? Well, to be quite frank with you, ma'am, uh, we were in conversations with another contractor over in the year. We thought we had reached an agreement with them. Uh, that did not work out, quite frankly. Uh, we reverted to uh, my current contractor, Safeguard, and as part of that discussion, you know, the debris hallway was was uh, was included in the bid. Uh, frankly, I, I didn't feel uh, financially right to, to do two two expenses when I had it built into into the the demo and the construction. Now, had the original plans worked out earlier in the spring, quite frankly, we would have had that done. Mm -hmm. uh, we had last year, we had, uh, we had two weather episodes last year. One uh, ripped a big chunk of the roof off and dislodged the pearl that I had there. The second subsequent one, we had a lightning strike that hit our pool, quite frankly. Um, it blew out the sidewall pool, which I had uh, replaced. Well, the hallway, I'm going to rephrase that. Uh, but then we, okay, I mean, the insurance guys had to come out and see it, and then had, had that hallway. Uh, quite frankly, what happened uh, the next day after that episode uh, changed my priorities for the balance of that year and for the balance of this frame. My 27 year old daughter was diagnosed with breast cancer literally the next day after my. So quite frankly, my priorities to uh, worry about replacing the pool and jump right on doing that build uh, became somewhat secondary. She had aggressive breast cancer, which God bless think, you know, she's, she's on the back side of the mouth. Uh, finished that up early summer, which would coincide at the same time we were in discussions with contractors. So, um, you know, I, I understand that there's two piles of lumber right back there right now. There's a big hole back there where that pool was. Uh, the hole does not hold water. 
is to do a count question. Uh, we were working on improving a lot, as it is last week. And I for last week, that. A few thousand dollars worth of trees in my backyard. So we're going to do this addition, regrade, put a new pool in, level it all out, and it will be gorgeous when it's done. Well, let's hope so, because, and it's not just your place, I just, I felt kind of suffocated when it, the houses were beautiful from the street, but when I found in the back, I just felt suffocated. And especially yours, you know, put, put yourself in a neighbor's perspective. Mm -hmm. Y'all want good, good looking properties. And to keep that in mind, and this time, even if you have to have, to have a contractor do it, be sure that it's all along the way. Yes, ma'am. For your own benefit, as well as you My contractor can step up here and tell you that it's part of our contract. And all the way. Matter of fact, we will. Enforcement. Enforcement. Well, I understand that if, and if he doesn't haul it away, he'll be in violation of this contract. So, you know, the best I can tell you is, uh, you know, we had intentions to do things earlier this summer, but uh, as I'm sure all of you have been in negotiations with, with vendors, sometimes those don't work out and you push on his back. And that's what happened. And we went a different direction. And we've now, been burned before by contractors, so we're a little skittish well, of them. We, yeah, we, we, we built a house several years ago on the west side of the uh, Put our sweat equity into it, put a lot of money into it, and uh, quite frankly, those contractors walked us out at the last minute because they, they realized the house was worth more than so it's worth. So um, <clears throat> we are, we're sort of crossing the team and dotting the eyes with the contractors and making sure that, uh, you know, what they tell us is what we're going to have on paper. So uh, I, I appreciate the point, and, and it will be all the way. Matter of fact, work's supposed to start literally the day after we get the building permit. It's on their schedule. And within probably a couple of days, it'll all be torn down all the way. Now, pool will be back immediately, but I got that I got that under uh, under contract too. So it is a timing issue. from the board. Hearing none, Mr. Collar, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate your comments. <clears throat> there being no further questions by the board, we will open the meeting public comment. Uh, as a reminder, the uh, board has published rules in regards to public comment. Each person, person wishing to make public comment will have three minutes in which to do so. Comments uh, should be restricted to the petition that is before the board. Uh, Mr. Clerk, I'll keep time uh, regarding the uh, speaking time. And uh, you have a list of... You might have one, but I think there's some others at all. There's some others at board. There's one signed up. Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking you're right on that too as well. So, uh, Sandy, you have signed up to speak. If you would like to go yeah. ahead. I wasn't going to, but when she brought up the eyesore and the enforcement, you should drive down Parkway and look at the property across the street from the uh, what you, secondhand store because that's an eyesore and not nothing, have, but something that's, that's not getting enforced. I have looked at that and I know what you're talking about, but that's not our issue tonight. I know, but when you talk about enforcement... And there's others in town, too. Right. But. Okay. Thank you, Sandy, for your comments. Uh, obviously, that's not the purpose of this meeting, but we'll definitely take those to her as well. Uh, are there other individuals in the audience that would like to present their information? You would just kindly state your name and your relationship, etc. Yes, Pat Capronica. I live at 420 Ravenwood Lane, directly north of the Athens property. I'd like to start by addressing upon the board that you know, we've been putting up this, like Joe said, since 1999. Um, and, you know, we're not expecting a lot, but just about a little bit of reasonable property maintenance goes a long way with us, with anybody. 
who are asking ourselves why this is allowed to continue. It's been since 99. We've been looking at this. It's, it's morphed over the years. And we spent a lot of time and money making our own outdoor living spaces and buying as our indoor space, not only enhancing our property's appearance and value, but also that of our community. Fall's the time of year when we want to enjoy that the most, and that's when the leaves, unfortunately, start to fall. And when the leaves fall, directly behind us is, is an unkept property. We've got to look at that six, seven months out of the year, since 1999. Therefore, I'm requesting that you please reject the applicant's request. They do not have their community's best interests at heart. Now, having said that, not unreasonable. I wasn't looking forward to this. I'm not enjoying this. In fact, I'm missing my uh, golf league year-end steak dinner right now for this. I'm a little bit frustrated, beyond frustrated. You know, if we want to sell our house and it's fall time, you got to look at that. Somebody walk in there, turn around, and walk out. I know that's what I would do. You know, um, the mention of being burned by contractors, I'd like to address that. You know, uh, it's my understanding about the former situation of the contractor that their sweat equity was so subpar that the builder would not put their name on the job. Just want to address that because that's from the record. So that's all really I have to say is just please think about it. Not unreasonable if the upkeep and the maintenance is done in the yard, perhaps get that done, maintain it, then do the garage. Fine with me. But right now, it's been 20 years and I saw so that's all I've got. Unless you have any questions. In fact, I invite you to go over and look at it right now. I was there today. You know, so. I'm going to say I, I was there. I was there today. It's, or yes, today. Today or yesterday. I, I've been there. Yeah. Is there anyone else that would like to present to the board? I am. Yeah. Just part of my three minutes when I'm handing my laptop. Um, you've probably all seen this, but it's been there for months and months. This is today, and I'm thinking you if you were coming here, we know what the ordinance is. That's a four foot fence. That's that's the weeds behind our house. That's my side cut that I cut. Then there's that that we both cut. Then there's that growing through the fence all over the tree growing through the fence. Like my husband said, we've been looking at this for years. This is not new. We've also had personal situations. My father-in-law just passed away. We have a maintaining property. His mother's not well. We still keep our property up. We demoed our deck two, two years ago. We hauled it away. We deal with contractors. We take care of our property. I feel like arrogant, irresponsible, and just, it, it, there's no regard for neighbors. We have been looking at this for years. A door, the, the garage door going out to the backyard. It should have been painted like 12 years ago. Um, a tractor, a tractor that sat out in the yard. I don't know how long they first moved in. I would say, I don't know how many trees, pine trees laid there with the root balls just burning in the sun that the first died, only a couple. Nothing. So that's, yes, they did. I was there. I wish I would have taken first pictures of it. The pool, I was home. There was no lightning strike. The pump failed. It was no, really it was not, Amy. You don't know what happened. It was in the middle of the freaking night. Tim was there. Time up. It was during the day. The I was there at home, but so there was no <laughs> light history. Um, I was in the backyard when I saw this big pummel of water for hours and hours and hours shooting into the backyard. So my point is, if you can't take care of the property you already have, why be allowed a variance to add on to something that hasn't been maintained for 20 years? That's all I have. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate that. Mr. Chairman, did I have a chance to respond? We got three minutes. You had a half hour. We haven't been here half an hour. Uh, ladies, all in order, please. Uh, that's not the way it works. So, um, uh, he can come back. Here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. You may address the concern. With respect to the lightning strike issue. Um, we submitted pictures to our insurance company. The top of the pool was singed. It occurred at about 4 a.m. in the middle of the night with two lightning uh, 
strikes or thunder claps. Uh, I came out the next morning and the pool was completely drained. Uh, I took pictures which were submitted to an insurance adjuster who also came out and I saw the lightning thunders on top of the pool. That was not in, quest, in question, and it was verified by the insurance company. We also checked with the National Weather Service because lightning striking pool and lot. But that was confirmed. My uh, claim was fully accepted. With uh, respect to dealing with this for 20 years, that was back to the root of all this uh, the trees were delivered and were planted within a couple of days. I don't know the, the, the idea that the root ball would expose. None of the trees died. None of them died. There are still five pine trees there. Every month. Uh, but all of them are frozen. So um, I guess from, from my perspective, the question is this. You know, the petition is a two-foot variance. Um, if Two foot variance were not necessary, there would be no variance in the discussion for the adult. And that would be, I guess, a slightly different discussion with respect to upkeep of the yard. And the best I can tell you is right now, this, this construction occurs, the lumber will be hauled away. Actually, it will fine. Uh, I have a young gentleman. High school guy, and boy, him come mow my yard every week. Why aren't the weeds mowing them behind the fence? Um, I'm also, you know, never objected or said a word about anybody, you know, running. Uh, you know, if you look at the back of the house, if you go to the easement that's area back there, people have fences across the fences. Fences are all within my property line. They did not put them as far as they could. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't understand this, uh, this animosity, quite frankly. Nobody's ever come over to my house and said a word. No one said a word. So, if a neighbor had an issue, or if I had an issue with a neighbor, I'm pretty sure I'd have a conversation with the neighbor first. Okay? But, you know, I, I feel like, you know, there's been a personal attack on me tonight. It, that's, that's not for you to deal with. What's for you to deal with this? Two of parents. So uh, I apologize that you had to deal with this. And I'm happy to answer any other questions or give you any assurances that you want. Or have my contract with them leave the same way. Yeah, we're, we're here in a three minute break. Sure. So, so I think we're. Right I do on. have a question. question. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, you stated earlier that your neighbor on the side uh, where the uh, addition will be built with that direction and had or had not um, any concerns about this correct. Not having concerns. Yeah, no concerns whatsoever. I had several conversations with him. My understanding is that uh, he's I think they have in contact with with, with Mike too. Oh he's a part of the record letter. And I also was in contact with um, Carter, the with Jeff Carter, and since they were the developer of the subdivision, and they had a question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else at this point that has not addressed the board that would like to address it? <coughs> Tim Hutchins, I live at 410 uh, Red Bull Lane, just uh, directly uh, east of the Copernicus. And I have a clear vision also of the Hollers Yard, and, and it is an eyesore. It has been for years, in my opinion. Um, very poorly maintained. Uh, I'm going to be selling my house in my hand. And I've had friends come over and go, whoa, look at this backyard. I said, yeah, I know. Hopefully they do something about it. I'm always, I'm living on hope that they will do something about it. Um, so I am concerned, you know, to sell my home and that I maintain very well, I think, and uh, um, that will, I'll have an issue selling it because of their backyard. I mean, they say they're going to do things, saying they're going to do things. So, I'm just wondering. 
express my concerns there. So. They do something. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you as well. Appreciate your comments. Uh, Mr. Clerk, um, is there any written testimony that you have that we need to enter into the record at this time? Yeah, we received, uh, uh, I, letters went out to, I believe, 10 property owners that were adjacent to the property, which included uh, uh, the neighbors and also the properties that are on the rear of the, of the home, uh, the courts with ordinance. Um, we did receive one, two, three, four different responses. Uh, you had mentioned Ryan Lewis, who was actually the property owner who probably would be mostly impacted by the two for fairness being granted. He did contact me, um, and, but also provided a written statement that he wanted me to read the record just briefly. He said, I don't care whatever that Joe is building in addition, as an addition to his house that will bring in, I do, I do approve this and support um, his variance request. Um, the property owners at 350 Wood Duck Court I'm going to mispronounce this, I apologize, as the Lazanski and Jonas and Jadini at 75 <laughs> South First, that's their address, which is still adjacent and within the um, cold sack, um, both also support the project and um, the variance request. Um, Mr. Rochetti, who lives just to the other side of uh, 425 Wood Duck Court, uh, had called me on August 29th at 1 p.m to let me know that he also support the project. Now I'll let everybody know that these are also properties that do not face the rear of this home. Um, and we have been working with the hollers in order to come to compliance. And we hope that as a result of this construction project, you in fact will be occurred. And Joe knows how serious that our office is in remedying this problem. Um, we did also receive an email from the developer uh, of the subdivision, um, both Jeff and Joe and Carter, um, who have looked and reviewed the plans as submitted, and they also see no problems with um, supporting the setback and the adjustments of the two foot variance. That's all we had for that. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Appreciate that. Uh, at this point, uh, to address the board the public comments section session session is now closed <clears throat> i will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn from the public hearing and return to the zoning board of appeals meeting so moved. it's been moved and seconded all in favor say signify by saying aye aye all right the ayes have it the, hearing, the public hearing is now concluded we are now back in regular session of the zoning board of appeals Are there any further questions that the board has regarding the petition for the zoning variance as presented to the board?
includes final grade and seeding of the interrupted areas during excavation. Okay, I understand the zoning board does make recommendations after review of this to the board. I will make well, a note the word late. I would need a copy of that contract in order to yeah. you know, approve it from the board standpoint yeah. to assure that that in fact is the is the case. And like this early November completion, is that still true? And we'll also have you also have stipulations on time, mm -hmm. on timing, duration, how long this project will take if approved, let's say next week. Right right now we're in the three month time frame. Okay. Like yeah. this is not just questions I have for the time tracker. Yes, it's and so right. there's obviously we have contingencies within ours. December is not a good time to put seed down, okay. so our seeding and landscaping is done within reason. As soon as the weather breaks in the spring, then we'll return that portion of our contract. It won't be paid out until that part of the work is complete. So I can get sections of those contracts. We'll sure. Make sure we forward those to the too. Just so we're not going to that this is actually going to be done in that reference to So with that stipulation and condition, I recommend that we grant this. What's the timeline for cleaning it up? At the end of construction? To during demolition. Which is when? That's the first thing that happens. Yeah. It'll be done within the first week, I'm assuming, in which you guys begin the project. Yes, and I, I mean, there is going to be equipment on the site for those three months. There is going to be yeah. our debris and our things, but it's not going to be scattered yeah, throughout that's understandable. you know those are on a thing that are done daily if it's muddy outside and i got work to do inside i'm not going to send guys outside to go clean it up in the mud and drag mud right, back through the property but so it'll be done within reason but it'll also be kept within reason during construction i just want to clarify so the stipulation is related to construction not other issues regarding maintenance on the property I think once they correct these issues, it will resolve at least the immediate issue with okay. all the rubble and everything else that's in the real property. And we hope that that will be done within the first week as we move to the part of the demolition. What about and the five-foot leads? Well, the and I think the, the, the ongoing maintenance is a separate issue from this, which right. would require our office in order to enforce that. So if there's weed growth and such, that's a separate issue altogether. Right. We'll have to address okay. as a zoning issue yes. and an enforcement guideline for us which means it will visit the property immediately and make sure that those things are done within a reasonable time after, um, under ordinance, I think it's five to 10 days once written and this is provided. But okay. hopefully that'll be done sooner than that, Joe. And, and I just want to clear, so everyone understands uh, that our role as the, the, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals is to do what we just did tonight and is as to listen to the comments uh, review the orient oh, variance, excuse me. I'm having a real hard time with English today. Uh, <laughs> review that review the variance that's presented to the board. Um, and uh, we make a recommendation to the village board to either approve or disapprove. And it, the final determination comes from the village board, which that will happen to be presented at which next board meeting? That's the next board meeting, which is next Tuesday evening. Next Tuesday evening. So, uh, just so everyone's clear on that, I, I just want to make sure that that uh, you understand how that process works. And uh, so right now, at this point, we do have a motion on the floor to make that recommendation, if I'm you know, correct me if I'm wrong in reiterating this, but to make a recommendation to the village board that they uh, approve the variance request as written and that the, uh, uh, there's been no, the village engineer has reviewed that and they can see no issues with that and that uh, the, the situation with the, uh, the lot scenario uh, with, uh, I'm not sure what terminology I should use there exactly, but, but for uh, getting it cleaned up, so to speak, I guess. Um, we, we would encourage the village board to consider that that terminology and that wording as they look at the moving the variance as well. Am I correct? Is that where you want to go, Jane? Well, there will be a special note to the village board in right. reference to right. uh, the comments that were made today and the, and the, the, the general overall feeling and stipulation that. And of course, I'm sure an inspection afterwards to make sure that it's not a high source to the. 
I think it would be not only afterwards but during the project as yes, well to ensure that so. those things are being complied with. Yes. All right, and there are processes in place with the village to make sure those things happen. Yes. It, it'll be probably yes. a heightened one on this one. <coughs> yes. But yes. I just, for sure. clarification before I second the motion, is sure. I think there, there are two separate issues here. Right. We have a request for a variance, and uh, the village engineer and uh, adjacent neighbors had no, no objections to that, given the ordinance that govern, govern setbacks and stuff. Um, the issue with uh, maintenance uh, of existing lawns and stuff, that's a separate issue, and that's addressed by a, a, a different process. We are here to address the zoning issue. I'm sure Mr. Stratton and, and uh, the village will address the other side of that, but that's not our purpose here tonight. That's been addressed months and months ago when nothing's happened. Yeah. I would ask you, uh, suggest you continue to pursue that. I have been. Okay. Anyway, I will second the motion to approve the variance yeah. request. You have the first and the second, Mr. Chair. Uh, motion, motion was uh, <clears throat> by James, uh, seconded by Randy, to uh, to recommend approval to the Building Board of Trustees petition of Mr. Joseph Holler. To prove the prove the variance, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, variance prove the to the variance of five ten dash five dash seven as recommended by the uh, village engineer and the staff, um, and with the stipulation to the board as uh, as much as possible, I guess, from that perspective, as as we worded earlier. Um, Mr. Clerk, will you please call the board? The band is. Hi. Burge. Hi. Bybee. Hi. And Bull. Yes. Uh, the motion passes the recommendation presented to the Village Board of Trustees at the next regular boarding, board meeting, which we stipulated is uh, a week from tomorrow, right? That's yes. correct. Right. Next Tuesday, which is September, whatever, 16th, 17th. Um, with that being said, uh, I appreciate everybody being here tonight and participating. I know that it's something. It's a little dense, and I get that, and I understand uh, both sides of that equation, and, I, and um, I think everybody that sits on this board does it as well. So uh, everybody's concerns we take to heart. Um, I think everybody has the same goal of wanting to have a, a good homestead as well as, as a, as a uh, well-preserved, well clean. Uh, sharp looking village and uh, uh, it's not always easy and I think we all understand that as well. So uh, that being said, uh, I entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, Jane, I motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, please say, signify by saying aye. 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 aye.